Hello, Captains. Well, this is it. I am coming at you here at the eve of the season 11.5 update. This is Monday, April 11th, right before the season 11.5 update comes to Star Trek Online, and Cryptic has released the release notes for the patch coming tomorrow. So I thought I would just go over these release notes real quickly and we will see everything that is new or changed in tomorrow's patch. So here we go. Here is what is coming. Here is what to expect. New featured episode, The Temporal Front. The new featured episode, The Temporal Front, has been added to the featured episode tab in the journal. This episode can be played by captains who are level 10 or higher. So this continues the storyline that we are in in the Temporal Cold War, uh, in the current um, storyline that we're in right now, um, The Temporal Front. So there you go. I hope you have uh, played all the missions preceding it so that you are aware of what's going on. And then, of course, you can play Temporal Front um, if you're level 10 or higher. Don't know what the rewards will be yet for this mission, but I'm looking forward to finding out. There, there will probably be staggered rewards like they usually do, uh, where they release rewards one week, and then the next week they release the other rewards and on and on. Uh, so probably you will have to replay this mission several times. I am looking forward to playing it, of course. As soon as it is out, I will play it and make a video for you all. There is, of course, the skill system revamp. So this is a really big thing about this season 11.5 update. The skill system has been revamped to simplify the system and help players make better choices when choosing skills for their captains. All references to skill points have been changed to experience points, as these are no longer spent on skills, but simply gained to increase levels. Players will gain space points and ground points, which will be spent to purchase skills. Players will earn one space point each level, starting at level 5 and ending at level 50 for a total of 46 space points. Players will earn one ground point every 5 levels, starting at level 5 and ending at level 50, a total of 10 ground points. So there are a lot less ground skills than there are space skills. Obviously, space skills uh, completely outnumber the ground skills here. However, um, it does end at 50, so you do not earn any more skill points after 50, which I have a disagreement with, which I posted in my preview to this whole skill revamp thing already. I feel that the skill level should continue on to level 60, and that's where it should end. Now that the end game is level 60, and that is the final end skill that you reach, I feel that the skill points or these space and ground points should reflect that. This was their chance to expand the skill system beyond 50 now and make it scale to 60, but they're not doing that. And I don't like that personally. I think it should go to 60. That's my personal opinion. Every skill node in the new system costs either one space point or one ground point to purchase. There are, uh, there are 110 skill nodes in total separated as 90 space and 20 ground. So they're going to call these little things nodes. We'll have to keep that term in mind. Space skills are separated into tiers, each of which require a certain number of space points spent in any of the previous tiers. Ground skills do not have tier requirements, but some ground skills have prerequisites. Purchasing skills will also grant players progress on new unlock paths. Once earned, unlocks do not cost space points or ground points to activate. Some unlocks require players to make a choice between two different unlocks before either will be active. Some skills from the previous system have been moved to these unlock paths. Unlock paths are also how players will earn new bridge officer training manuals. Space skills have three separate unlock paths related to purchasing skills in each of the three profession categories, engineering, science, or tactical. Ground skills have only a single unlock path. So this whole thing here about these unlock paths uh, we kind of looked at that in the preview. That's that like bottom row of unlocks as you skill up in a tree or whatever. Um, we're just going to have to get used to how all that works. I'm not sure either how it's all going to pan out in the end. But um, you and me are going to be working through this together to figure this out. Uh, there's a lot of question, a lot of debate right now about, you know, how to use this thing. A lot of people are confused about it right now and rightly so. It'll take some time for you know, patterns to emerge until we can figure things out. 
Spending 24 or more space points in a single profession will unlock a powerful new ultimate ability, which can be further enhanced through the unlock paths. Um, now, I have, I have heard some feedback in the forums that this ultimate ability thing is really just a, a skill point or space or ground point, whatever, uh, sync in that um, this is just a way to sync points and not really achieve anything that useful. Uh, I, I have no idea, of course. That's just speculation. That, that <coughs> excuse me. That is what uh, some of the debate was about on the forums when talking about this. So I've got no idea how that's really going to work out. Upon logging in for the first time after this update, players' skills will automatically be reset. All players will have one free respec opportunity. Future skill retrains will cost a standard retrain token. For more details, please, please visit our skill system revamp blog. So I definitely recommend reading that blog. Um, that'll probably give you a lot more information about how to use this system. I'm going to try to read it in detail myself to try to learn it. Um, and it does seem you are going to get a free reskill, obviously, tomorrow. Um, so naturally, the very first thing you should do is reskill your skills. Because if you just go into battle without redoing your skills, you're not going to be very powerful. I mean, you're not going to have any skills, no skill points. So um, go and, you know, do your whole skill thing. Now, the thing about that is if you mess up, let's say, I mean, you're only going to get one free token. Let's say you mess up and in the end you're like, you know what? This isn't right. Well, it's going to cost you money to retrain. And I think that is probably where they have failed a little bit here. I think instead of one free token, they should give you two or three. Because let's face it, this is a brand new skill system. None of us are familiar with it. We are going to make mistakes on our first skill set. On our first, you know, when we first enable these skills and use them, we are going to make mistakes for our character. And I don't think they realize that or they haven't taken that into account, you know. We are going to set it one way and then start playing and figure out, you know what? This really isn't how I want things. I want to redo my skills again. Well, that's going to cost you a retrain token. And I think that's where they get you. Is they're, they're only giving us one free retrain token. So you, there's no room for error. They're not giving us room for error or mistakes here. They expect us to get it perfect on the first go. Which I think is kind of ridiculous. Um, perhaps that's a money sink for them because it, it does benefit them because if we don't get it right on the first try for not knowing how the system works, then we have to spend money for a retrain token and uh, they win in the end because everybody's spending Zen now to buy retrain tokens. So um, I wish they would have given us at least two. That way we could have, you know, one as like a trial run to make sure that it, we have it set right and then another one in case we screw up that first time because I'm telling you people are not going to you know have this thing nailed down the very first time their first build or their first skill set that they set up here they're probably going to make mistakes and there's going to be a lot of angry people wanting to retrain their skills again <laughs> so um, yeah, they might want to think about that. That's how. That's what I would do anyway. I would, I would say two retrain tokens. That's what they should do. But um, yeah, anyway, let's go on here. Nakul Red Alerts. Join a strike force to fight against the Nakul Raiders from the future who are focusing attacks on transport convoys. So there's my answer. I was wondering if these Nakul were from our timeline or if they are from the future. Uh, these Nakul and these Red Alerts are from the future. So we are fighting future technology, future ships. That's interesting that we can go head to head with them, <laughs> considering they're from the future. This is a new five player red alert for level 50 players and above. The red alert becomes available to queue in sector space when a new cool ship appears. So it's just like the Tholian or Borg red alerts and only for 50 and above. Then there is the new Romulan Republic Admiralty Campaign, a new Admiralty Campaign which offers players a new group of assignments to assist the Romulan Republic with a focus on crafting rewards. Completing tours of duty for the Republic will reward players with three Romulan Republic Universal Tech upgrades. These tech upgrades cost no dilithium to use and give 15,000 technology points. Reaching Tier 10 within the Romulan Republic Admiralty Campaign rewards the RRW Zidinia Epic Quality Admiralty Ship. The Zidinia is an escort with a unique ability to increase both engineering and tack for every other ship on the same assignment. 
The Admiralty system can be accessed in Duty Officer, blah, 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 level 52 and up. Uh, uh, strategist Secondary Specialization. This new secondary specialization focuses on abilities that can shift between offensive and defensive effects at will. The new threatening stance ability in the skill revamp plays a heavy part in this secondary specialization. So we talked about this in the last video, but um, this new specialization is actually going to be tied into an actual skill called uh, threatening stance. And depending on if threatening stance is toggled on or off, that is going to determine certain powers or abilities uh, available on the second on this new secondary specialization so that's kind of unique that they've done that and I think probably going to be a little confusing that people will not understand that you know straight from the start so um, you know that's something that people really need to pay attention to is that that's that skill if it's toggled on or off will affect this secondary specialization and what of what abilities are being presented to you that's a very important fact there. I'm not going to go over all the stuff here. We talked about it in the last video, but you can kind of glance over this here. Pause the video if you want to read all this or go to the web page. Uh, but this just talks about all the stuff that's going to be available in that secondary specialization. Ship visual slots. Captains will now be able to equip deflectors, impulse engines, and shields in the new visual tab to modify the visual appearance of the ship. Equipping these items in the visuals tab will not add any of their stats to the ship. Any items equipped in these slots will override the visual appearance of the ship and cannot be changed until the item itself is taken out of the visual slot. The visuals tab can be found on the ship status window next to the loadouts tab. The items equipped in the visuals tab can also be saved in loadouts. I'm highly looking forward to that. Then just some general resolved issues here. Resolved an issue that would occasionally cause a crash when altering a costume in the tailor. Resolved an issue causing graphic related crashes, crashes with minimum requirement level AMD cards. Resolved an issue which occasionally caused a crash when a mission step was completed. Resolved an issue which occasionally caused a crash during a map transfer. Resolved an issue where withering disruptor beam arrays did not have any audio effects. Resolved an issue which was allowing some players to have a ship costume when on ground map. For the players who experienced being blocked from reclaiming a unique DD officer such as Neil Falconer because the system believes it's in the player's inventory upon logging in, a new version of this item will be in the character's inventory. I had that problem actually. Resolved an issue that was preventing players from commissioning multiple Embassy Bridge officers and Jabberwocky, the Defiant now attacks more reliably. Yay. That, I always thought the Defiant in that mission kind of stayed behind and didn't do what it was supposed to. Uh, some system updates as well here. Chemocyte Lace Weaponry. Resolved an issue that was preventing chemocyte laced whip weaponry from landing critical hits. This ability's chance to crit is now equal to character's base crit value. Resolved an issue that was preventing chemocyte laced weaponry from benefiting from plus damage modifiers, including natural uh, modifiers gained with level. To compensate for this, the base damage val values have been reduced to 66% of their previous values. At level 50, this results in no change when not wearing any gear or using any damage enhancing abilities and now scales up with either both. Boarding party can no longer be used while in a shuttle and cannot be used if you are currently targeting a small craft. Boarding party will now launch Romulan shuttles if used by a Romulan captain. Good. Resolved an issue that caused the EMP burst ability to not reduce power transfer rate of affected targets. Resolved an issue where the chroniton split beam rifle was not properly triggering its proc. Updated the long description of resilient shield arrays to more accurately reflect how incoming damage is distributed. Uh, SS Rep Fleet and Reputation Engineering Consoles now display a more decipherable tooltip. Resolved an issue that was causing many explosives duty officers to be equipable in the ground active duty roster instead of the space. Resolved an issue with concentrate firepower that was making the triggered kinetic damage non-responsive to both resistance. Resolved an issue where the space agony phasers disable proc was not triggering correctly. Resolved an issue that was preventing Orion Slaver hangar pets from stealing loot from targets. The destruction of Orion's slaver hangar pets no longer mentioned stealing crew. Duty officers that used to improve abandoned ship has been rebuilt. The new functionality ties in with the new introduced threatening stance. While active, outgoing torpedoes have a chance to taunt your foes. While inactive, outgoing torpedoes have a chance to placate your foes. Higher quality of this doff improved the chance of a proc. The turret fired by warp shadows now plays a visual FX. Resolved an issue where the taunt applied to warp shadows could affect crit uh, critter targeting after the warp shadows expired. Skill revamp changes to powers, so the skill revamp is also going to change some powers here. So this will be important to uh, check out. 
Added a new ground captain ability, Threatening Posture. When this ability is toggled on, all outgoing threat generation is increased, making enemies more likely to attack the player instead of other targets. Also, when damaged, players have a chance to gain increased maximum hull for a limited amount of time. This effect can be stacked. When the ability is toggled off, the threat generation is unmodified. The Abandoned Ship Captain ability has been replaced with a new Captain ability, Threatening Stance. Okay, we just read that. When this ability is toggled on, all outgoing threat is increased. Yeah. Okay. When the ability is toggled off. Okay. Resolved an issue that was allowing many resistance effects to be resistible and strength effects to be strengthened. Okay. All ground captain abilities, set bonuses, and duty officer active roster abilities are no longer improved by any skills. These abilities have had their baseline effectiveness increased by between 25 and 50% to account for this loss in performance scaling. So that's interesting. So all ground captain abilities, set bonuses, duty officer, active roster abilities, all that are no longer improved by skills. Wow, that's a big difference actually. Um, but they have increased the baseline to compensate. Well, that's gonna be interesting to see how that changes things. So this, this, uh, this update here really is gonna change a lot of things like powers and stuff. It's going to be interesting to see how things are now. The amount of hit points, shields, speed, and turn rate gained from skill bonuses no longer scales up based on ship tier, but has been made consistent across all tiers of starships. What? Wait, hit points and shields and speed and turn rate gained from skill bonuses? Oh, gained from skill bonuses. Okay, so then this, okay, no longer scale up based on ship tier. Oh, okay, I, uh, that's interesting. Hit point and shield scaling is now as follows. Tier 1 and Tier 2 were 0.0957% and have been increased to 0.3. Tier 3 was that and has been increased to 0.3. Tier 4, so everything's been increased except for Tier 5 and Tier 6 has been slightly decreased. Just slightly. Everything's now set to 0.3%. I'm not sure how that's going to translate, but interesting speed and turn rate scaling is now as follows so t1 t2 and t3 have been increased t4 has been increased and t5 and t6 have been increased interesting shuttles and other small craft also benefit more from skill bonuses but not as much as full-size ships the crew mechanic has been removed uh, what's the crew mechanic oh like where the number of crew you have on your ship determines like your whole strength or your no i think it was like subsystem recharge time or something like that the few benefits this stat previously gave have been set to their previous maximum value for all players tactical so that's interesting so the whole crew mechanic is gone and there used to be a crew mechanic um and but it was always confusing what it actually did but now any bonuses that it gave have been removed and set to their maximum value so the crew mechanic no longer exists. We don't have to worry about the number of crew a ship has anymore. That's kind of interesting, and that's that's kind of a big deal. I mean, that's a that's a big change. Tactical readiness. The two-piece set of Klingon Honor Guard and Adaptive Mako no longer provide crew bonuses, but instead increase hull regen. I guess there were other crew bonuses like uh, brace. Uh, what was it? Brace, not something like brace crew or something. Um, doesn't the Jem'Hadar set also have something for? crew wow so these things no longer have crew bonuses it's now been turned into whole regen reroute power from life support no longer has any mention of disabling crew so disable crew when your crew dies or disables or anything that buffs crew it looks like those have things have been removed now the promotional EMH Science Console no longer restores crew when activated, but instead provides a passive bridge officer. So yeah, anything that has improved or buffed crew has is, is been changed to something different now. That is interesting, guys. That is interesting. That's a big deal. Emergency Force Field Engineering Consoles have been replaced by Subsystem Redundancy Consoles, which provide resistance to subsystem offline effects. Biofunction monitor science consoles have been replaced by nanite reinforced circuitry consoles, which provide a, bon a bonus to passive hold regeneration. See, I used to use biofunction monitors a lot, especially as I was, you know, leveling a new ship because they were real cheap, easy to get a good science console. And that would uh, that would help like crew regeneration or something like that. 
but now that has been turned into this nanite reinforced circuitry console which is a bonus to passive hull regeneration these are things that we're now going to have to keep in mind that don't exist anymore biofunction monitors thing of the past gone all these things are changing oh my gosh all energy weapons now benefit from unified range drop-off mechanics all energy weapons will now lose a maximum of 50% of their base damage when fired at maximum range. This drop-off begins at 2 kilometers from the targeted foe and increases linearly out to max range. This change unifies the mechanic by improving cannon weapons which previously lost up to 60% of their base damage at 10 kilometers but slightly decreasing the effectiveness of beam weapons which previously only lost 40% of their damage potential at 10 kilometers. Okay, so energy weapons now have a range, a range damage fall off. So basically, if you fire at the maximum range of 10 kilometers, you are not doing the most damage you can. So you have to be close, the closer you are to the enemy, basically, the more damage you're going to do. The farther away you fire from the enemy, the less damage you're going to do. And it looks like they've possibly improved the cannons that actually helped cannons a bit, but it's going to weaken the beams just a little bit. See, that's the reason why a lot of people went to beams previously over cannons now, is because cannons had that fall off in, in damage. And especially something like cannon scatter volley, you know, not all of your firepower is hitting the enemy, but with beams, you're always getting 100% of your firepower hitting the enemy. Um, but still, this distance thing is going to affect your damage. So DP, 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 yeah. DPSers take note. If you want the most damage, you need to be uh, right on the heels of your enemy. <laughs> uh, you are going to do less damage the farther away you fire, no matter what weapons you have. So that's kind of important. Remove skill benefits from many powers previously enhanced by sensors. The magnitude of these powers has been increased to match what it would have been pre previously if the player has 99 sensor skill. Fire on my mark, sensor scan, tachyon detection grid, and tachyon detection field. The scaling aspects of most powers that benefit from skills have been altered and normalized. This will have the most notable impact on powers that benefited from particle generators, now called exotic particle generators, and profession-specific ground skills, now consolidated as kit performance. Some powers will have gained effectiveness while others have had their skill contributions reduced. Fleet skill boosts have been updated. All boosts have been correctly translated to give skills that exist post revamp. Military boosts have been renamed as tactical boosts. All boosts will now persist through death, map changes, and changing of ships. All existing boosts may on now only be used in space and no longer grant skill boost to ground. A new ground skill boost has been added which grants bonus to all ground skills and may only be used on ground. The new ground skill boost is unlocked at the same rate as tactical boost and costs military buff provisions, same as tactical boosts. All applicable descriptions have been updated. The benefits gained from shield subsystem power and auxiliary subsystem power have been altered. Benefits gained from shield power have been slightly reduced, but new skills have been introduced that allow these benefits to increase beyond their previous caps. Benefits gained from auxiliary power have been rescaled so that low aux grants more benefit and high aux grants less benefit. This new scale pivots around 100 aux power at which point no differences are present. Huh. Well that's going to affect a lot of my abilities and you see a lot of people did use aux power to boost their DPS in certain ways. For example using the Nukara offensive trait there is the ability to increase your damage based on your auxiliary power. That's a very well known and used trait for DPSers. Um, the thing here though, it sounds like, is that now we are going to be getting more from that at lower aux power, but less at higher aux power. I I'm not sure how all that's gonna translate or work out, but the fact that that has changed is worth noting. So same thing for the shield subsystem power. So those things have changed. We need to be aware of that. Updated descriptions on diplomatic immunity and marauding force to remove references to driver coil. Warp cores that previously boosted driver coil 
no longer use the koi mod but instead display as sec speed i guess sector space speed so driver coil is no longer a thing that's good i'm glad it didn't need to be anyway Field Technician now uses the kit readiness stat that reduce kit module recharge times. The amount of innate resistance to stun effects that players have in ground combat have been reduced. The Techie personal, personal trait now adds plus 20 to both hull restoration and damage control, changed from plus 30. Resolved an issue with the Starship Perception skill so that it appears correctly. Console Science Sensor Probe items will now grant Starship Perception, which directly improves the ability to detect cloaked ships. Sweeping Strikes, Lunge, and Biotech Siphon now scale with Kit Performance Skill. Nadion Inversion now reduces the cost of firing weapons properly. There is now a section for Innate Skills listed on the status page under both Ground and Space Weapons that reflect the few skills that characters gain naturally via level progression. That's good. Doctor Duty Officer that increases max HP on use of healing now grants as much benefit as previously available with 100 Medic Skill. Increased damage dealt by the cloud left behind by plasma emission torpedo by 50% in order to compensate for lesser scaling from exotic particle generators. Graviton spike now scales with kit performance. Trajectory bending has had its base value decreased but now scales with kit performance. The Psi CDR mod that appears on deflectors was changed to grant 50 starship scientific readiness instead of directly modifying cooldowns. Resolved an issue with attack pattern Omega that was causing the defensive buff to boosted by other defensive buffs. Also affects the story power attack pattern Tuvok. Nurse, medic, duty officers that previously improved crew regeneration now directly improve hull regeneration. Skills that previously scaled with driver coil now scale with impulse expertise. EPS Manifold's duration has been set to 15 seconds, but no longer scales with battery skill since the skill has been removed. Foundry added new Kittimer interior map, added door from Kittimer, added mirror universe costumes, added Terran task force pieces, added Terran uh, Odyssey upper for females. Foundry functions will be temporarily unavailable upon the release of season 11.5. UI, there's some UI changes here I didn't see coming as well. Added a reset button to the exchange, which removes all filters except the sort type. The buttons in the transwarp UI should now fit within the window barrier, or better. Added a hide button to the mission list, which prevents a mission from appearing on the mission tracker. Updated support for Razor Chroma peripherals. Uh, Razor Chroma peripherals. Added shield, health, throttle, and expose to Chroma keyboards. Added lighting characters and loading screens. Updated the red alert lighting. Added an indicator flash to the HUD when a reputation project has a pending reward. Ah, oh, that's cool. Added the default positions of some HUD elements. There should be no changes to any manually adjusted HUD elements. Skill points and specialization abilities can now be purchased by double clicking. Resolved an issue that caused displayed shield regeneration to not be affected by shield power. Resolved an issue that was preventing class powers from showing up in character creation. Resolved an issue that could cause the switch starship button to extend past the status UI window. Character added eyeshadow as an option for male Vulcan, Klingon, Romulan, and Remans. Now males can have eyeshadow. Hooray! Changed Herald armor category to Herald sets. Resolved an issue where some chests would be invisible when wearing the Kabali chest piece. Added tights as an option for skirts. Federation badge revised to be Starfleet only. Resolved an issue of missing chest with the Federation female jacket. Known issues. Foundry functions will be unavailable. The button to acknowledge a failed admiralty mission states collect rewards on the view details tab. The assignments to recruit Roman bridge officers do not appear. Shield technician makes your shields show up when cloaked. Selecting ready starship and the ship selector is not moving slotted items over to the ship for some players. Wow, so there's a lot of changes here, especially with the powers thing, and I think that's what we're going to have to mostly get used to, is how the powers have changed with this new skill stuff. And I think that's going to be the crux of debate for a long while to come. And uh, there will be patterns that emerge over time, but we will have to figure those out. And as I said, the first time we set our skills, I think all of us are probably going to make mistakes. So... Get your wallet out because you'll be spending money 
to get retrain tokens so you can respec your character again because they're only giving you one free respec, which I think is ridiculous. But uh, it's good for them because it gets them more money, I guess. Bad for us because we have to spend money. So I guess my point is take your time setting your skills tomorrow. Uh, when they come up, sit there for a long time and study it. Make sure when you select your skills and hit that final button that you have them set where you want because you cannot change them again without buying a retrain token. So everybody, good luck with that. I'll be doing the same though and I have a lot of characters to study <laughs> then, as I'm sure other people do as well. So yeah, good luck with that everybody. All right, thanks for watching and um, I'll see what happens tomorrow.